People may think this is just a fairy tale sport. But it's more physically demanding than you could ever imagine. But unlike regular sports, eSports has no boundaries. So Dylan here can play with any player anywhere in the world. Kenny Hill, more of a mobile quarterback. Kyle Allen, more of a pocket quarterback. What quarterback would be best for the Kevin Sumlin system? But don't call him Kenny Football. He's creating his own path here in College Station. Trella. An experience unlike any other, one that you all have to enjoy. Whoa, cause I'm free! Free falling! With two games under their belt, 14 true freshmen have displayed raw talent while improving the weakest spot of this team from a year ago. But at ABC 40, we put the two-time champ to a real test. And I challenged Martin to a game. And let's just say he passed. Ah. Today marked the first run ruled game that the Baylor Bears faced all season. The last time they did that was in 2013 in a super regional loss to Texas A&M 8-0. As the Baylor women's team addressed the media, they knew that they were in the Elite Eight. But by talking to them, you just couldn't tell. And that is due to having such a winning program over the past couple seasons. A&M head coach Kevin Sumlin always sticks to his guns, and he's had a great track record with QBs. From Cobb to Keenum to Johnny, they have all done well under his system. We expect to move the football score and win. After all the stiff competition here at the Purcell Pavilion, these Baylor Bears are looking forward to cutting down some nets this March. On this one-on-one, -on -one, Des Bryant is open. Go and get it, big fella. Tis the season of talk around the college football world, as yet another poll by the Associated Press helped mark the bar for teams heading into the first year of the college football playoff. Jadavion Clowney came out tonight's game against the Falcons like it was the Sugar Bowl. Coach Kennedy just wanted his players to play aggressive, and they sure did that. Alex Caruso, you can't stop me, huh? In the top of the second, bases loaded for Jose, 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 Jose Altuve, as he hits his sixth of the year. The exhilaration of reaching your ultimate goal gives anyone a surge of emotions. I'm at a loss for words right now. I kind of shed some tears a little bit. My whole body's just giving out. And the College Station Cougars are no different. After grabbing their first state title, head coach Scott Holder wanted his team to cherish every single moment. For the next 30 minutes, I want you to soak up every minute of it because it's going to rank in the top five moments of your life. You understand me? There were medals to chomp, trophies to raise, and a loving coach that received the greatest shower of all. These guys just showed a lot of heart, a lot of character. Uh, you know, we did this for our community as much as us. Uh, give something back to College Station. The target of being ranked number one all season was lifted and gave this team eternal bragging rights. We were ranked number one in the state and we ain't falling. And I mean, we made that happen today. And we honestly weren't number one until this happened and we made it happen finally. It's ridiculous that it's finally, our dreams finally came true. We fought so hard and we, we got the job done. We made history today with no seniors. I mean, that's the most amazing feeling ever. There's not another group of guys in Texas that I'd rather do this with. I love my teammates so much, and I'm, I, I have no idea what to say right now. The season ending with 34 wins and the treasured prize is satisfying, but the team has the right attitude for the future. It's not going to mean anything next year, honestly. Uh, we're going to come out, and we're going we're gonna to put in work again and work harder and do, try to do the same thing. In just two years of existence, with no player on the roster older than 18 years old, these Cougars have raised the title up early here in Austin. But they can't even defend their title in 2015. They are moving from 3A to 5A ball, where the competition is going to be even tougher than this year. Reporting in Austin, Mike McCoy, ABC 40 Sports. For one team entering the 2014 season, football isn't the hardest thing that this Hearn team has had to deal with. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. These are the protests of Ferguson, Missouri. These are the citizens of Hearn, Texas. Where in early May, 93-year-old Pearly Golden was shot and killed by a Hearn police officer out front of her home, having a firearm in her possession. However, this situation, similar to Ferguson, has affected the Eagles in their own backyard. I mean, I stay right there, like right around the corner from the corner from me. But I think it was wrong that they did that. Yeah, I'll, I try not to be out late or do anything bad because I don't want to be in that situation. A woman that has lived her life for so long and have her life taken 
uh, in, in such a way. Yes, I, I, I was upset when I heard about it. For cornerback Deshaun Flintroy, the incident hit home for him even more because in January of 2013, his cousin Tedderell Satchel was shot and killed by the same officer, giving him great pain. Honestly, truthfully, she wouldn't hurt no one, and she doesn't look to hurt anybody. Yeah. I was very angry to know that someone very close, someone very dear to me, just falling for no reason. What seems to may have been another struggle, though, has been a gift. As former head coach Clinton Smith has left the program in mid-July, a week later came her in class of 1993 Chip Baker, who has brought his school spirit to rejuvenate this team. You know, I take great pride in that and being a Hearn Eagle. You know, I can I can still sing my, my fight song, you know, you know, all that thing. So you know, like it means a lot to me to be a Hearn Eagle. Baker's energy is rubbing off on his players. It's, it's just good to have someone from here come back to want to help see kids in a small town make it. He's gonna actually get out and work out with us instead of just standing around. He bring the excitement to practice. And then we go to the game, we know it's going to be even more exciting. He makes a pick up the tempo. It doesn't matter what, what's thrown at you. What matters is how you handle it. I just, you know, search for those positives and dwell on those positives and go make it work. Baker is making life easier to these kids every day. And that is a lesson this team will not soon ever forget. Reporting from Hearn, Texas, Mike McCoy, ABC 40 Sports. The cornerstone of success for the Cowboys the past couple seasons has been thanks to Tony Romo carrying the team on his back. But since December, Romo has been out of action from surgery to that same back. Tonight, however, he was healthy and in action against the Ravens. His return did not start well. Here on a handoff to DeMarco Murray, no one had a grip on the ball except for Courtney Upshaw, who takes this fumble 26 yards into the end zone for the Ravens. Romo, though, would come back thanks to his trusty partner. As the Ravens blitz a safety on this one-on-one, -on -one, Des Bryant is open. Go and get it, big fella. He scores for the Cowboys, their first touchdown with Romo and Dez. However, Flacco and the Ravens were on point tonight as the former Super Bowl MVP was looking elite once again. On the fade route to Torrey Smith, the Ravens won 37-30, but Romo felt good finally back in live action. You never know, you know, coming off an injury, how you're going to feel and just the progression it's going to take and the time frame, I guess you could say. You have an idea, but it's nice to be able just to see that you can go out and play and your back holds up, your body holds up, and it's not the, there's always going to be talk until you come back and go do it. That's part of anybody going through surgery, but we're doing it and it's going well. Romo was able to go four for five for 80 yards and a touchdown in his return. And Jadavion Clowney came out tonight's game against the Falcons like it was a sugar bowl. He runs right through Anton Smith. Take another look. You can't stop this raging bull. He is a monster. On the very next play, Clowney beats his guy again out of the gate and sacks Matt Ryan. His presence was known tonight. Ryan Fitzpatrick, after two interceptions, though, last week, moved a little bit in this one. He wasn't going to throw another pick, and that is a gain of 10 yards. Then later in the drive, Alfred Blue runs in one for the Texans. Their first preseason touchdown, they are up 7-0. Fitzpatrick then became more comfortable, hitting Davier Posey for the 8-yard touchdown. He went 9 for 12 for 97 yards, and the Texans win 32-7. Now down College Station, the replacement to Johnny Football has been named as sophomore quarterback Kenny Hill is a starter for Week 1 in South Carolina. Aggies head coach Kevin Sumlin announced it this afternoon just before his team headed to practice that the former Texas 5A Player of the Year out of South Lake Carroll will be taking first team reps in preparation for the Gamecocks. But Sumlin says Hill's position is not safe by any means. Kyle is, is going to continue to get better. I think he's going to continue to work and, and Kenny's going to have to continue to work also. The competition has been a, 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 a coach's best friend. Kyle needs to keep competing, and Kenny needs to keep competing at the level he's competing to stay where he is. Hill played in four games as a true freshman, completing 18 of 22 passes for 183 yards and a touchdown in 2013. Coming out of South Lake Carroll, Hill was also named the Texas Gatorade Player of the Year in 2012, where he accumulated 42 touchdowns in 5A ball. The Astros, for the first time in team history, were able to win at Fenway last night. But could they repeat again tonight in Boston? 
Dexter Fowler gets the Astros on the board early tonight, and he singles into right here. That brings in Grossman from third. It is a 1-0 game with the Astros up. John Singleton gets on top of this ball. It bounces right into the Boston pitching circle. So the Red Sox force an out at first. However, that scores a run. It was 3-0 Astros after one. Chris Carter then continued his home run campaign. His 29th of the year. That leads all AL batters. But the Red Sox would come back in the seventh as Boston would win 10-6.